Hi, this is Robbie with Tickner Photography. I just got back from a week and a half in China and I wanted to talk about what I brought, what gear I brought for travel photography. The first thing when you're about to travel abroad, you want to travel pretty light. Uh, for this reason, I specifically got a new camera, the Sony a7. It's a full frame camera, but it's very tiny, very light. I decided to purchase it with the kit lens also because extremely light. You can carry it around. It doesn't look like you're a giant professional photographer walking around. I was in China, so everyone had a digital camera and a lot of SLRs. It wasn't really a big deal, but I wanted something fairly small, but still a nice full frame camera capable of taking pretty nice shots. So with this camera, I used a, a Black Rapid RS7 strap and that worked nicely. You can walk around all day with camera at your side and it's pretty comfortable. I also switched my normal camera bag. I use a Think Tank Retrospective 30 in most cases with my SLR and big lenses, but I have a PackSafe SLR case. It's one of their larger ones. It's basically a security bag camera case. It has a woven mesh in there. It has a padlock. The uh, shoulder strap has cables built into it, so you can't cut it. You can pretty much lock it and secure it to something and it'll be okay. That's the theory anyway. I've had it for a few years and I don't use it that often because I like my think tank, but for traveling, it's ideal. It's smaller than my normal camera bag, but I wanted it lighter, so it worked out. So that's my camera bag and my camera. Lens choices for traveling. I wanted to keep this light also. So I have a kit lens, which is a 28 to 70 millimeter lens, full frame. It's variable aperture, which is unfortunate, but because it's variable aperture, it weighs almost nothing. It's probably a quarter of what my Zeiss 24 to 70 weighs. I also brought two other lenses. I brought my 50 millimeter 1.4 in case I was gonna shoot some low light stuff. I ended up almost not using this at all, just once or twice at a dinner. Uh, the night shows we went to, we weren't allowed to use a camera, so couldn't really use it. I also brought a ultra wide, a 11 to 16 Tokina, and I have the E mount to A mount adapter on here. It allows auto focusing with the semi translucent mirror with this camera set up with the A7. So I used this lens in a few places. It was pretty useful, but primarily just because we were with the tour, we were always on the go, very fast moving. I pretty much stuck with the kit lens, when, and it worked okay. One thing to consider with the Sony a7, I can get about 600 shots on a battery and then it's dead. You need at least two batteries. I had three with me. I never used a third, but I always had two charged batteries with me and I was fine for the day. Make sure to charge it when you get home to your hotel at night. So the next thing to consider is data management. So you have your camera, you've taken pictures all day long, you get back to the hotel and now what? Your card's almost full. Do you want to switch cards every single day and have a stack of those? Me personally, I decided to go another route. I brought a tablet computer and a portable hard drive. So I was able to offload my pictures onto this portable hard drive every night. I was also able to offload the other, I was traveling with a few other people and offload all of their pictures, a video camera, a still camera, this camera, all into one consolidated place. So we had a backup on theirs and I would clear mine every night and just store it on my portable hard drive. This was a two terabyte Western Digital My Passport Ultra. I'll link to that below. I also was using the Dell Views 8 Pro tablet. It's basically a Windows 8.1 computer, just very small, very light. It can run Photoshop, Lightroom, everything. Really cool and very inexpensive. I got this on Black Friday for not very much. I'll link to this below. And I think right now it's running about $225, $250 for a full Windows 8 computer that doesn't weigh very much. And you can put movies on it and watch it on the airplane, which was cool. I got minimum screen brightness, 10 hours of battery life watching movies the entire way. So that worked out pretty cool. Um, your other thing to consider is how to get all of the information from all of your devices onto your tablet, onto your hard drive. I bought a powered USB 3.0 hub. This was really nice. Because it has an external power supply, 
you can be charging four devices simultaneously and transfer data through it to your hard drive via the tablet. You will need one of these little adapter doodads so you can plug the nano USB from the tablet and connect it to a standard USB 3.0 port, even though the tablet's only USB 2.0. So that's important. The other thing to consider when using this particular tablet, most tablets in fact, is they charge via the USB port. So when you plug an external hard drive in, it's not charging, it's using that data instead. So make sure it has a full charge because it's gonna be on battery the entire time you're transferring data through it to your external hard drive. So I think that about covers my little travel photography tips. This is what I brought when I went on a week and a half to China and it worked pretty well for me. There was nothing that I was really lacking. I was wondering if I would need an ultra telephoto zoom lens, but I didn't end up needing it, which was good because I didn't bring one. So I'm gonna put a link to all of my gear in the description below if you're curious what I was using. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.